Hello friends, I am Dr. Rosa Oliai, obstetrician and gynecologist from Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh, India. I would like to share with you some of the you know, queries and the answers to them, the myths that is there amongst the women, especially regarding the corona vaccine. Once you get vaccinated with the first shot, you're still not ready to fight the disease, so you need to be very careful. You still need to wear your mask, which should cover up your nose and mouth. You should wash your hands regularly with water and soap. You should keep a distance of one and a half meters from the other person and avoid going out. The second shot will be good enough. You need to take it. However, it takes 15 days after the second shot that your body will be strong enough with a good immunity to fight the disease. Some of you have asked this question that besides, in, irrespective of the vaccines, one is getting infected. Sometimes it happens. Although, let me assure you that it will not be a very severe disease. You don't have to be admitted in ICU. You need to protect yourself, even if you're vaccinated. So all goes together hand in hand. The query, question usually is about the menstrual cycle. It is very safe for the woman to take this during their menstrual periods. Regarding breastfeeding and pregnancy, there has been studies of the vaccines which are Pfizer and Moderna, which is safe during both the situations. However, the Federation of Obstetric Society of India has given us permission to use it, but they are waiting for the Ministry of Health Government of India to let us go ahead, give the permission. So till then, I would like you to wait. And that is regarding the vaccine which is available in India, that is Covaxin right now and Covishield. Now regarding the mild symptoms of the disease when you are at home, watch for your fever. Make a note of it. Make a note of it on a sheet of paper. When do you get the fever? At what you know timings you get it? How much is the fever? And at the same time, if you have cough, See how often you're getting it, how comfortable you are with it, and how discomfort it's giving you. It is best to consult an MD physician, a general physician, for your treatment. However, I will show you what you could do at home. You must keep with yourself a simple thermometer. This is a mercury one, which uh, most of us can use. It's a little difficult to read. So instead of this, I advise my patients who are at home to use a digital thermometer which you can just press the button here, put it below your underneath of your arm, beneath your arm, underneath your clothes, and take the measurement of it. This would be a little more easier. Now, regarding your uh, pulse oximeter, most of you have asked me. So it's a very small machine, if you can see. All you need to do is open it, put your fingers with your nails up inside, press the button, there will be some digital demonstration of certain things written here. So it's going to show your oxygen capacity, SpO2 and the pulse. So right now you have to wait for some time. Have patience. After some few seconds, the display will be there. So right now the display that is seen here on my hand is I've got 98% of SpO2 and my pulse is 79. So this is all about this small digital machine that is very easy and I would advise you all to have it with you at your houses. Now, once your SpO2 is 94 and above, there's nothing to worry. Sometimes when you're lying down and you're coughing, it may come down. At that moment, don't panic. Sit up straight, drink water, take deep breaths, measure it again. There is a very small test, a very simple test that you could do those of you who are coughing or a little breathless. Take your pulse oximeter when you're sitting. Note what is the digital that is coming there. Take a round of six minutes. Remove it, take a round of six minutes. And again, measure your pulse oximeter with how much of capacity you have. Now, if it comes down from 94 downwards, this is a little bit of an alarming note to you. So I would suggest that immediately contact your physician and tell him about your symptoms and what you have done. This is a very small test. People are panicking. They think that for every little cough, a little dry cough or with sputum, one has to go and get a CT scan done. It is a no, no to you. A CT scan chest can only be done under the supervision of a doctor if he thinks you need one. Because 
the radiations which come with the CT scan is far away that can, you know, uh, make your, uh, you know, body at risk of, God forbid, later on uh, with, you know, cancer and other difficulties. One CT scan radiation, if you go for it, is equivalent to 30 to 40 X-ray chest radiation that you're going to be exposed with. So you need to be very careful. The most important remedy that you can have and use for yourself at home could be a paracetamol, which you can always take whenever you feel a little feverish. Mind you, note your temperature and then get the paracetamol tablet. This just is just to help you to wait for some time, observe yourself. Nevertheless, you need to be in touch with your MD physician. Now, as far as taking care of yourself and your family members, if you feel you've got temperature, you have the symptoms of cough, tiredness, loss of appetite, loss of, you know, smell, make sure you're quarantined at home in a separate room. If you have children around you or elderly people, make sure they are away from you. Wear masks all the time in the house. For those of those patients who are breastfeeding, you can either extract your milk and give it to the baby, keep the baby at a distance in another room. If your rooms are very small, you cannot do that. Make sure when you're breastfeeding, your hands are washed, you're wearing a mask, and keep the patient baby at a time just to breastfeed, and then after that, make sure that baby is kept aside. Looking after your hygiene, your personal daily routine is very important. Make sure you have plenty of water, hydrate yourself during these days, eat fresh cooked vegetables, Make it light for yourself. Plenty of fresh available food, seasonal foods for yourself. These are little bit stuff that could help you overcome the quarantine period. Now, you don't have to panic. You don't have to be really upset. This is the best time that you can be in touch with your close friends at home. Read things that you like, books that could give you more knowledge. Do not go to too many WhatsApp messages or TV news which makes you very upset. But, however, you have to be in touch with the latest updates of what is happening in your country regarding the coronavirus. So read the news, watch the news in the mornings and at night, but try to occupy yourself in watching good movies, you know, hearing good music sounds, because definitely the world that we are in living is surely at odds with itself and corona has added more challenges to our living. So we need to be positive and I'm sure if your mind is confident, if you are mentally not stressed, your immunity will be built up. The immunity goes down if you're frightened. If you are, you know, it's all in the mind. So you will have to be very careful about how you manage your routine for yourself. I hope these little tips have helped you further on to carry out a good life and live the present because today is a gift called the present. Wishing you all the best. Take care of yourselves.